In this video, I'm going to talk about command history. The simplest way to use command history is the up and down arrows. Like this, I'm going up, going back down. There are two places where the command history is maintained. It's maintained in a dot file called dot bash underscore history. That's a text file where it records commands that were used in the past. The second place is in the actual memory of the computer. Whenever you exit out of a shell or turn off your computer or whatever, the commands that you used get written to this text file. When you open a bash terminal, it reads that file. But after it reads it, any new commands that you use during the session are only staying in memory. But they will be written to the file when you close the bash session or, you know, exit out of bash. Okay, I'm going to show you the bash history file. It's right here, bash history. So I'm going to do cat. Okay, what it's showing me here is the beginning of the bash history file, the text file. And apparently the stuff at the beginning is the old stuff. So these were the last couple of commands that got written to the history file, the bash history file. Just keep in mind that during a bash session, when you're actually using the bash terminal, the history that's being made is just being maintained in the memory of the computer. It's not written until you close the terminal. However, there is a way to look at all the history without having to look in the bash history file. Okay, it's the history command. Type history and hit enter. Okay. See, it showed you all of the history, including what's in memory. I'm trying to get to the beginning of it here. Okay, here's where I type the history. And this is all of history as we know it. And I can tell that these are the more recent things. See, these ones didn't get written to the history. That's why we didn't see them when we looked in the history file. Now notice that the list is numbered, and these numbers come in handy because you will be able to use these numbers in order to recreate commands rather than using the up and down arrow. And I'll show how to do this. It's done with the exclamation mark. Exclamation and then some number like 400 or something. And then you would hit enter. All right, let's say that I want to run this command on line number 501. I'll show how to do it. Exclamation mark, and then five. Now let me run um, 502, okay. Okay, see it ran that command the same way that I ran it the first time. Now, if I hit up arrow to see that exclamation 502, which I just entered, it doesn't show exclamation 502, it shows the actual command. That way if I edit the command, like let's say get rid of this pipe and more. Now, I'm not going to run it again, but I want to show you that if I type history, okay, you see that command which I had just recalled and then modified without even running it? Well, the modified version shows up here and it has an asterisk showing that this is a modified command and it wasn't even run. Okay. So just keep in mind, when you use these references to history and you go up and down with the arrow or do a history command, it's not going to show the reference. It's going to show the actual command. And if you modify this command, it will remember the modification, the modified command. Now, if you do exclamation minus three and hit enter, that's a reference to this command, the history command. So minus three means go back three and run that command. So I'm going to, let me do minus two. Okay, see it went back to this one and did that one. Now there's another trick here. If I do exclamation and then start typing a previous command, I'll do the echo one again, E-C-H, and I won't finish typing it, I'll just hit enter. See, it guessed that it was the echo command line number 506, showed it to me and ran it. So this is a way, redoing a command that you know there's no ambiguity. If you just ran a cat command, and then maybe an ls command and you want to run the cat one again, just do this exclamation ca and then hit enter and it'll run that command. Okay, the exclamation exclamation is a reference to the last command that you ran. Okay, the last one I ran was this one. So if I hit enter now, it'll run it again. Okay, now let's say I had wanted to do sudo with that echo command. I would hit sudo and then do that. Okay, so this is just a reference to the last command and I can even use it as part of another command. Okay, there's another thing with those exclamation marks. Exclamation dollar sign. 
that is a reference to the options that were used with the last command. So let's say I just did like edit and some file name. And now I want to run that file. No, I don't know if that's a good example. Anyways, I think you understand what I mean. Okay, the last command I gave was this one. Okay, the argument to that command is this. Okay, so let's say I do cat and then reference that argument, which is a file. Okay, see, it did a cat on that file. There are some options with the history command. Okay, I could do history minus D and then let's say 502. Okay. 502 is a line in history. If I do this, run this command, it'll delete that line. And then when I run history again, you won't see it. That It gets deleted from history. If I want to clear all of history, I would use the C option and then hit enter. But I like my history, so I'm not going to delete it. Okay, that's it for command history.